This raid on the chambers of parliament by police and other security officers to remove errant MPs on 27th September cast Uganda into the global headlines. <laughs> the operatives stormed in to eject MPs, whose speaker Rebecca Kadaga had ordered to vacate over in discipline, but had refused as an MP moved to table a motion seeking to scrap the presidential age limit from the constitution. Our rules require that if you are told to leave, you leave. If you don't leave, the sergeant at arms leaves you and takes you to the, to the gate. Yes. The speaker has owned up to a letter she wrote to President Yoweri Museveni seeking to know from the head of state, who is also the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, why MPs were humiliated. It was not only the sergeant who was here, the other forces. And when I found out, I wrote to the president. I told him I want to know who are these people who are here. Because they were not workers of the city, they were not part of parliament, they were not uh, sergeant at arms stuff. In the letter dated 23rd October, Kadaga sought explanation on the identity, mission and purpose of the unsolicited forces, and why they assaulted MPs, as well as the reason why MPs were detained at police stations after removal from the chambers. Days later, Inspector General of Police General Kale Kaihura said he was the overall command of the raid on parliament. I requested sister security agencies to support me. I'm the one who planned all this, if you want to know. Kadaga addressed the matter while meeting a team from the African peer review mechanism. She also noted that there was tension in the country over the debate on the constitutional amendment bill, seeking among others to lift the 35-year lower and 75-year upper age limit for one seeking election as president. There is a, a proposal to amend the constitution to remove the age limit so that uh, people of 100 can stand for uh, presidency and something that is uh, uh, causing tension in the country. So the tension outside uh, was also reflected in this house. For about a week before we had that problem, the whole of this parliament was surrounded. Meteor tanks all over here. But Kadaga's letter contradicts statements she made shortly after the events of 27th September. While presiding over sitting on 4th October, the speaker said she could not apologize for acting decisively on what she said were errant MPs. I will not apologize for applying the rules of procedure in this house. I will not. In that sitting, the house full of NRM lawmakers overwhelmingly passed a motion praising Kadaga for suspending the 25 MPs. I put the question that this house do appreciate uh, the conduct of the presiding officer. Those in favor say the contrary, no. I serve it. And days later, while speaking in Mubende district, Kadaga said she had to move against the MPs because they were setting a bad precedent. There has been an attempt to, uh, to execute a coup d'etat. <laughs> a coup d'etat. Whereby the Prime Minister of the Government of Uganda was not allowed to speak. How can the Prime Minister be silent? How can he be forced to sit? MPs who are already sharply divided by the age limit debate have given mixed views on the Speaker's letter to the President. This letter should have been a half-fast action. But by the Speaker referring members of Parliament to the Rules Committee saying they must pay for what was destroyed in Parliament, I think that was ill-advised. I, I really feel right now the Speaker, she's coming back to her conscience. She has realized that she has made a terrible blunder. I don't know what would have happened if the actions which were taken that time didn't take place. It's not clear when, if at all, the president will respond to the speaker's letter. Hubbard Ziwa, NTV at Parliament.